not exactly the most impressive showing here, but definitely super fun to try out some of those things. So I guess the question now becomes, do we give it yet another try? See if we can make Oni work by some miracle. Or do, is now where we call it and we change gears slightly? Could still potentially stay Oni, could still potentially stay Shapeshifter, switch up the other variable in that configuration, or completely change gears and just try something else. I'm not sure what else is new. I guess hexes change, so maybe the Hex Slinger background has the new, uh, what is it, Jinx Bite? Something like that. You've been having luck with the Monk Start. Okay, I could definitely try that out and then still even potentially end up changing into shape-shifting later on in the journey. Don't hate that. Well, I guess let's start off. Just hop in here, get a bit of the, the view of the species. So I believe, yeah, Armator has some minor changes. Feel it has some minor changes. Mummy got slightly better. I think they get their necrotic like curse effect earlier on now, if I remember correctly. Have there been any other species changes? I feel like I saw something about Genie, but maybe they didn't really change too much functionally. I think it was just the way their skills are displayed and uh, and la displayed and labeled are the same thing, but displayed and interacted with, I guess. It has been a long time. Could just do a genie. Genie is now kind of like Noel in terms of spell casting. Oh, so you have all the schools, but just really high aptitudes, and they're always on something like that. Tengu and Vine Stalker got buffed. Ooh, interesting. What did Tengu's get? Something more. I'm trying to think of what could have been accentuated of their kind of general vibe here. Potentially something like a evasion? Tengu now have an inherent acrobat. Plus 15 EV after moving or waiting at experience level 1. They gain plus 4 at level 7 and instead of a 20% EV bonus in fast movement. Interesting. So, was there a general sweep here to uh, get rid of faster moving species? Make that a pure Spriggans thing? Do Spriggans still move quickly? Huh. But sure, let's try it out. Let's try Tengu. That could be fun. Oh gosh, what background though? Do I want to try Shapeshifter again? We could just go with Monk, I guess. Get a little more piety. Does that work with, I guess, Rue if we end up going them? But we could end, you know, open the floodgates completely and just roll with the punches and see what we end up finding as we go. Shapeshifter feels odd for Tengu. A little bit. Yeah, they don't. I don't think they have the uh, durability to really make it work. And I think in order to take advantage of the acrobatics, you need some end game for actually escaping, right? Sure, it's great that you're just more likely to dodge as you step back. That's nice for dealing with, you know, opportunity attacks as you retreat back to your stairwell. But otherwise, there's not a lot going on. You might not. Or you might also not want to lose some of their form, like flight. Oh, do their wings count as a slot somehow? Would you lose them? If all the buffs don't compensate for the moon speed changes. Moon speed is way too strong, so you guess it was deserved. Yeah. I still like that we had a few options of faster move speed. Like, you know, Spriggans were still the kind of go-to tried and true classic of kiting strategies. But it was nice to have a little bit of versatility in these other ones, but hey, it is what it is. And I do like the new changes. Even if it is a nerf overall, I'm not too in a tizzy about nerfs or buffs to anyone, as long as they're still fun to play. And that's more important to me, I think. Capital F, fun. Make sure the mechanics are just kind of interesting and intriguing and kind of get me playing Tengu again, which I haven't touched since the Great Player series. <laughs> what the heck is an alchemist? <laughs> Looks like it replaced Venom Mage. So, probably pretty similar. I don't know. I actually don't really know why that would have been changed. 
Oh, do they have any transmutation spells? Because I feel like anyone that had a transmutation spell definitely got a little bit of a shuffle, right? But, okay, I guess we should probably decide what the heck we're doing here. Could try out Summoner. Just for something a little bit different. Or go with a classic Conjurer. Is it a rename or else some changes? Yeah, anyone in the crowd knows? I have no idea. To me, all I can see now is the name change aspect. And again, potentially, there's some transmutation spells in there that probably got switched around. But, couldn't tell you. Alchemist gets Ignite, Poison, and Sticky Flame now. Oh, interesting. Dark Raven Child, the gothiest raven person there is. Sounds good, thanks for this name suggestion. Definitely helps the decision-making process there that I always struggle with to an absurd degree. And there were poison magic changes. Oh. Spindar, you think it's very, very strong? So specifically what, having the Ignite Poison Sticky Flame? Or was it Toxic Radiance? So they had Toxic Radiance already. If they now also have Ignite Poison innately, then that is stupidly strong. How are birds at poison? <laughs> Let's do a quick little looky-loo here, shall we? Or sorry, alchemy. They did change the skill, it looks like, as well. Minus one, that's not too bad. They don't have ignite poison? Okay, makes sense, because that is the wombo combo of my dreams and basically carries you to pass S branches, right? They didn't have both, you think it was just Radiance and Sticky Flame, never mind. Okay, cool. Well, let's see. Let's go in here and uh, Dark Raven Child it is. We'll try that one out. Try it on for size here, shall we? And yeah, there we go. Con confirmed that Alchemy is the new thing here. Sting still available. And then, apologies for the, the mic smack. Yikes. Mercury Vapors. Is this just a different name for Poison Clouds? Briefly transmutes the air around the target into gaseous mercury. Way more brutal sounding. You say Poison Cloud and it's like, oh yeah, there's some kind of abstraction of that. That's a classic fantasy thing. Sure, it's, it sounds horrible, don't get me wrong. But there's something about gaseous mercury being inhaled that uh, <laughs> makes me shrivel up a little bit internally. Uh, the target and adjacent creatures may be weakened by mere exposure to the substance. Huh. Seems interesting at the very least. The crop duster, indeed. Well, that is very cool. I guess, for the time being here, let's uh, just do some of ye old classic setups. Conjurations we're so good at that it's tempting to... Uh, Continue a little bit. I guess that does help get Mephitic Cloud online slightly earlier. So let's just focus Conjurations up to like three or four. You know, very quick to hit it. Won't take up too much of our experience and can very quickly go back into getting like poison sorted here. But a little bit of a head start doesn't seem too bad. And last but not least, let's get that seed and throw that up on the screen here. So you can join a long play from home and see how you fare. Fantastic. Well, without further ado, I guess we shall just get right into it, shall we? I mean, Poison or Venom Mage starts were always fairly strong. So I can see that still being the case. And actually, we can potentially use our acrobatic aspects. Okay, I got excited seeing the uh, artifact, but a plus one broad axe is not not ideal by any means. But we can use our acrobat to uh, regenerate MP here. Because when we're dodging away, only a 12% chance to hit us. Let's get up to... Actually, do you want two MP? You should probably do the trick. And sting the ever-living crap out of you, my friend. Beautiful. Um, a rune scarf? Okay. Pop that as an option for our future here. Tengu can't wear shoes? How did I not know that? Guess we do have claws. It makes sense to a certain extent. Be tough to cram those bad boys into them, but 
Fair enough. And okie dokie. Well, we'll see how that goes. Yes, we now are able to learn Mercury Vapors, so should potentially do so before we move too much further along. Uh, again, it's not going to be really castable for some time. But we know it's there. Excuse me, friend. Holy crap. We are finding artifact stores up the wazoo here on D1. Wait. <laughs> Did we take a wrong turn? Is this not... The dungeon of Zot, and we instead walked into some kind of open campus mall area. Um, guess we'll mark some stuff for future purchase. That's fine. They haven't researched sandals yet. True, that's what we need. We need some very specifically designed shoes to uh to fit in nicely with the claws. I'm sure they look pretty sickening as well. But okie dokie. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Well, let's definitely at least reduce the complications here, and then we have to just start dodging away and hope you succumb to the poison while we dodge every attack. Easy. Never doubt in my mind. Okie dokie. Uh, hitting level 3, though, does mean Mephitic Cloud can also join the club. Relatively close to being castable, so that doesn't seem too bad. Then again, if I can just stack poison on you... I like this acrobatic thing. It's going... Probably those sock shoes the rock climbers wear around everywhere. Very uh, tediously shaped to our, our talons. I like it. Be one of those weirdos that yeah, has always running around in our toe shoes. I feel like... Did I have toe shoes at one point? I feel like I had toe shoes. Why did I get toe shoes? I don't know if I even really used them. Because for rock climbing, you don't really want toe shoes. I mean, some people do. Those people also have insanely strong big toes. Because at the end of the day, like a good climbing shoe, very intentionally just shoves all of your toes into a kind of pointed shape so you can get a lot of purchase when you like smear on a slab with it. Because um, it's way easier to hold all your weight kind of distributed across your toes rather than if you're in like toe shoes putting all your weight on a single toe makes me uncomfortable just to think about it and in fact i kind of mimed it out under my desk with one of my feet and not even close to my full weight already is making it feel like i might uh break something if i if i push <laughs> but again people do definitely do it i've seen lots of climbers wearing them and so i guess more power to you if you have the the digit strength to make it work, I guess. Not for me. We need a DCSS and Birkenstocks collab. You're not wrong. It's important. I mean, we've always eschewed the uh, the importance of fashion in general, and that's not always the the hottest market wear on. Sometimes you just need to have a statement piece, which you know we've definitely done on many runs in the past. So whether, even if you're not a big fan of Birkenstocks, you can't argue that it would make a bit of a, a statement, to be sure. Especially since Zot is very anti-hippie culture, from what I understand. From what I know about the guy, total dick, first and foremost. But also, very much not into the uh, wishy-washy hippie nature here. Grinder, you're not poison resistant? This is true huh hooves are better than toes for climbing hey that's actually a really good comparison <laughs> that definitely is much more illustrative than the description i gave because we've all seen the ridiculous pictures of goats scaling sheer walls and it's a very similar thing yeah you get that hoof where all your weights on the one point distributing it nicely very true ballerina feet is a real thing that's, uh, I'm trying to think of what it would do, because they definitely, yeah, you have to, like, crunch your toes in, and then you also burn the shoes to kind of form them into a, a hard cap, right? I don't know that much about ballet, but I've definitely seen that process being done, and, again, that's another similar thing, where you are putting all your weight onto, uh, I guess, yeah, how does that work? I've never thought about the physics. <laughs> Grinder is poison resistant, says there at the top. 
Was I... Yeah, I just can't see today. I sound resistant to miasma. Immune to torment, resistant to miasma. Did they remove poison resistance? Oh, there, our poison plus. Thank you. Thank you, Rurik. I appreciate it. In fact, that's another part of this display that we haven't really been taking advantage of. You see all their resistances here now. Interesting. Which is why they're no longer listed down here. I'm going to have to, like, rewire my entire brain with how this thing is supposed to be viewed in red. Um, well... The grinder, please. Could we potentially just chill out here for a moment? Um, I guess I could waste a throwing net on you. I doubt we'll gain enough ground, but fortunately you get trapped behind our orc friend here, so that's not the end of the world. And okie dokie. Yeah, in general, I really like the change to the monster display, but there's definitely already bit of a learning curve to just get past all my my usual habits as to where I can find the information that we're looking for. Um, let's go back to Sting here, and hopefully we don't run into you again, my uh, dating app friend. I'm not too shabby here. I guess I should probably pick up a plus five dagger of pain. Definitely a heck of a lot better than what we're currently wielding here. Not too shabby whatsoever. Let's take a look. Mercury Vapors is fairly castable at this point. And Mephitic Cloud, it's getting there. 19% with red consequences is not ideal by any means. But hopefully we don't run into anything that requires it at the very least. I was about to say, Grinders are our main threat for this floor. And it's not going to work on them anyway, so it doesn't exactly play into it one way or another, for better or for worse. And, oof, I was hoping for a Staff of Poison to give us a bit more of an early game advantage. I guess we're just going to leave the level. I don't really feel comfortable or confident running into Grinder again. Yikes. It's pretty important to change the monster's attack opportunity. Yeah, we've definitely seen that in action a little bit, and that was one of the few changes that I had some prior knowledge to. It also, though, got me thinking, and one thing I have not answered for myself is that um, polearm users used to be unable to do opportunity attacks, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Again, they also brought in random energy again, uh, I believe. So it could have been some super unlucky rolls in that regard. But it seemed to me like a knoll in one of our earlier runs was just getting full attacks of opportunity with a polearm. Which makes sense that kind of with the phrasing because I believe before it was when you were adjacent to a monster, as soon as you went to step away, they hit you. Then you stepped away, then they took their turn. And now it procs based on their wording when a monster moves adjacent to you, they get the chance then to attack. So it's kind of switched the order of operations there. And if that's the case, then I could definitely see Polarm users now being able to step into attack range and get the free attack. But again, cannot say for certain. And we shall see as we continue onwards. A hand cannon of flaming. Machine that fires bolts via applied thaumaturgy. Very cool. Some project their, or enchant their projectiles to fall forward instead of down. I wish. I really like that. Playing with gravity is super fun in a fantasy veneer. Um, this looks to be, stat-wise, a hand crossbow, right? Fairly similar to hand crossbow, at least. I don't have the numbers you know, on the back of my hand or anything, and I definitely don't have them memorized. But it seems fairly comparable at first blush here. Well, that's cool. I don't think we'll be able to use it on this character, at least not anytime soon, but very neat regardless. And potentially gives us some reason to try another ranged weapon user in the future. You friend, poison vulnerable. That is what we like to see. I was hoping you had some kind of relation to your uh, boulder beetle cousin. Feel a bit more experienced. Beautiful. Died off screen. 
And holy moly. So yeah, being even remotely minus HP as a species definitely makes those sons of guns way harder to deal with. Level 5, 28 health. Bit of sticky flame is a bit more than we can handle, unfortunately. But do you make it on one piece, I guess? So can't complain too much at the end of the day. Oof. And our extra evasion not giving us... A rescue there. Yikes, friend. You hit like a gosh darn truck. 100% chance to hit you with fire. Let's do so. Beautiful. And definitely just rest off the corrosion as much as we can. Before we get back into the mix of things. What I probably need to be doing here, or at least should be doing to a certain extent, is actually using all of our spells a bit more often. The Fitted Cloud is looking fine. I guess alchemy should have probably been focused from the beginning, and that was a bit of a shortcoming in our ability to plan efficiently early game here, but that's fine. And otherwise, we'll just hope that we can kind of gloss over that mistake for the, the interim period until we're feeling a little more competent and comfortable. Why can't I wear a helmet? Oh, my beak. Beak and claws. <laughs> Man, it's been a while since we played Tengu. I did not realize quite how limited their slots were. Even though, as mentioned earlier, I don't think we have the best options for uh, shape-shifting here. At least that's one kind of tick in the column. Do ringmail of cold resistance. If I'm able to do that, that could be nice. The wiki redirects hand crossbow to hand cannon. Okay, so it was a replacement at the very least. They do more damage, but are twice as loud and create clouds when fired. Cans are also more likely to generate with a good brand. Very cool. I'm gonna miss hand crossbows, seeing as how I'm generally a huge fan of any setup that involves a ranged weapon and a shield usually only really permittable by a Formicid character. But regardless, I do like the theming of hand cannons. I had an idea a while back of just doing a bit of a uh, thematic replacement of wizards in something like a D&D campaign. So specifically what I had in mind was to instead be, yes, yeah, some kind of artificer and all of your cantrips and spells are different like modules and settings on your essentially a laser rifle but with a nice fantasy veneer over it where it's a cool new piece of technology could even have some random effects like it works well i think with a wild mage because and then random effects from the wild magic table are just malfunctions in your invention but i always have had a bit of a penchant for uh Oh, Pargy. I'm so sorry, buddy. This isn't even fair. Um, I don't really want to put you in the water, though. So I'd like your skin, please, if you would like to share. Thank you. So kind, so generous. I appreciate you, and your contributions shall go amazing depths in uh, the dungeon here today. W excuse me? <laughs> A brain worm? DCSS devs been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate recently. Uh, but yeah, I like these kind of completely pointless, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Visual replacements for a lot of mechanics and things like D&D. Just have some fun with the role playing. Functionally works exactly the same as any other player. But again, always like to paste over um, the illusion of I know, customization at the end of the day. Find the steampunky middle ground between D&D and cyberpunk, the tabletop RPG, it's, it sounds like. Kind of, right? At least the uh, in terms of vibe, but mechanically still just pure D&D. Um, but mainly because I'm just unfamiliar. That's pretty much the only TTRPG that I've played. I'm thinking, going through. Don't think I've ever tried Pathfinder. Want to try Weaver Dice sometime, but haven't had the chance. Um, but brainworm, right? Let's uh, 
relock in here already feeding on my intellect here my friend as we go off on a huge tangent but feed on intellect and brains hey brain bite what do you do drains a small mark small amount of our mind and a proportion of our magic with no direct line of fire needed so it's smite targeted drain that's fun or mana drain i should say and if we have near emptied magic reserves we take double damage okay definitely interesting oh i did not check oh you have no poison resistance friend mistakes have been made for sure <laughs> 